All right, in this short lesson, I want to look at how sessions use cookies to, to basically do what they do. So um, I'm in my Get It Done app, and this is in the state that we left it last time. So uh, it has users and tasks that can be assigned to those users or created by those users, uh, rather. Users can log in and log out, right? And remember that the way that we remembered that a user had logged in was by putting them in the session. So if we went down to, say, the login function here, the login handler, uh, and if the user, if the if we get a post request from the login form, that means somebody is trying to log in. We go through the process of verifying their information, and if we find that they gave us the right password, we're going to go ahead and set session bracket email equals email, and then in future requests, we'll be able to uh, to, to basically tell that the user has already logged in by looking for the fact that the email property in the session object is set or in the session dictionary is has been set so we did that in the require login function and so uh, this is a filter or you can think of it that way as a filter for every single request when every single request comes in it will look for um, the email key in the session dictionary all right and if it does not find that in the dictionary and we're not looking at one of our allowed routes the login or register page then we redirect that user to the login screen so we only let them pass if there actually is a value set for email in the session. So uh, let's look at actually how this works. Let's go ahead and see what's in the session before we do that by just printing out the session to the console. Okay, I'm going to go start my application. And I've already started my database, so everything should be good there. All right, I'll refresh, and then I'll go ahead and log in so we can actually see something set in the session. All right, I logged in, and the data I had from last time is shown there. Let's go ahead and look at the session. And uh, let's see, we had two things printed out, right? We had a flash message. We talked about how flash messages were stored in the session. And then we had an email. Let's go back and just uh, refresh that again. This time that flash, flash message, pardon me, should be gone. There we go. So this session only has my email address stored in it currently. Okay, so one question that uh, maybe you've been asking yourself or maybe hasn't even occurred to you but, but um, should at this point is how does the server basically know that it's me, right? Presumably several people could be logged into this application at the same time. They would each have an email property stored in their session, but how does the server keep us straight? How does it know that it's us? Um, and if you're thinking ahead um, and you took what we uh, learned about cookies to heart, you might think that cookies could do that for us and you would indeed be correct. So let's go ahead and look at how cookies can help us manage sessions. If I come back to the app and I open up my browser tools and go to the network tab, I'm just going to refresh so I can see that request and then open up that uh, request details and look at the cookies. And notice that there's a session cookie right here, a cookie called a session. Now it's got a bunch of gibberish inside of it. Uh, we don't necessarily know what this is. Let me copy and paste this and put this somewhere where we can actually look at it. That's, yeah, right, that doesn't really mean anything to us, right? So what is this? Well, one thing is happening, well, a couple things are happening actually. One thing that's happening is Flask has basically used a specific encoding so that we you know, can't easily read the contents of this cookie. But I happen to know a little bit about the way Flask stores cookies. So let me go ahead and, and uh, well, session cookies at least. Let me go ahead and copy this front piece, the piece before the first dot. And I'm going to go to the JavaScript console. Again, this isn't stuff that we would expect you to know, but we just kind of want to show you, you know, behind the curtain a little bit how things work. And I can basically do the reverse encoding to get at the guts of that cookie. All right, so that you can see that there's this little dictionary-like thing. This is what's called JSON, J JavaScript Object Notation. And uh, this stores my email right there in the cookie, right? But notice I only took the first chunk of that cookie, right? What's the rest of it? Well, we'll learn, when we learn about uh, hashing, we'll learn that that second piece of the cookie is actually a, a way that, that Flask uses to verify that we haven't mucked with the cookie on the, on the browser, right? So um, since we're using cookies to store the status of a user being logged in, 
Conceivably, if I had a way to modify this cookie and say, put, you know, jack at launchcode.org or somebody else's email and modify that cookie and then send that to the server, the server might think that somebody else was logged in, right? And that would be a really easy way for, for somebody to hijack somebody else's information just by knowing a little bit about how cookies work and how Flask uses sessions. Uh, so we don't want that to happen. And basically, the, the rest of this cookie is a way that, um, that Flask can, can do what's called signing a cookie. So it can make it so that um, it's basically pretty much impossible, not 100% impossible, but about as impossible as, as, as we can reasonably make it for someone to change the value of our cookie and be able to log in um, as us on the server. All right, so that session cookie is going to store any data that we put in the session, right? So that's pretty cool. That data is actually stored in the browser within the session cookie. So anytime you make a request, that session cookie is passed up to the server, and that is what's happening when you try to access the session within your Flask code. Uh, what's happened is Flask has unpacked that cookie and made those contents available to you, the user, to then uh, use within within um, the application code. So that's a little bit about how cookies are used to manage sessions. Uh, just one note is that um, this is this is not the only way that session data can be managed. We talked about a little bit how cookies have a limited amount of storage space, right? So you can't store a lot of information in a cookie. Um, basically, another way that cookies can be used to manage sessions is that they can just keep the ID of your session, and then that session information can be stored in a database, which has a much larger storage capacity. So that's another way. But uh, we're still using cookies. Just uh, instead of storing all of the data within the cookie, we would then be using um, the cookie to store the ID of a session that was stored in the database, and we could use that to, to store a lot more info. So cookies plus sessions uh, equals fun times for our Flask applications. And in a future lesson, we'll look at how to basically how to how to understand some more of this business when we have uh, all this this sort of hashed or encrypted cookies in our browser. All right, uh, but that's coming up for now. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and happy coding.